What's up, Seek Nation? Sneaky P here, back with all the news after week two in the preseason as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers lost to the Miami Dolphins 23-17. to For the second straight preseason game, turnovers have really plagued this team. And um, our backup quarterback spot is definitely iffy. I'm really not very impressed by Blaine Gabbert. Ryan Griffin had a good first game, made a bad throw in the second game that really ended up costing us, but I've, I've liked him more than Blaine Gabbert so far. But let's go ahead and jump on into it. We can upgrade some players here. We have Jordan Leggett, who is eligible for an upgrade. Go ahead and throw that on vertical threat for him. And, dude, he got all kinds of stat increases here, man. Wow. Ronald Jones, who continues to impress throughout the preseason, he is going to get upgraded as well. A loose back upgrade. Justin Watson, who I've actually really liked. Despite that early drop that he had, I have been a fan of Justin Watson so far. Excited to see what he can do moving forward for this team. Isaiah Johnson, the strong safety run support. Really, I prefer zone on all safeties. I want that zone coverage as high as I can get it. And moving it up by three there is very significant. Raheem Nunez Rochez will move up his power rush a little bit. Easy enough. KJ Brent, deep threat. And we're also going to look around and see if anybody signed anybody, if anybody ended up picking up Eric Berry or not. Damon Harris. So because I was looking at it and the fact that we had no cap space really worried me. Um, so I might try to make a move this week in the offseason. And uh, we'll see what happens. So, I haven't tested anything. I don't know if it's actually going to work or not. But, transactions, let's go ahead and find out. Uh, Bruce Ellington to the Chiefs. Terrence Williams to the Redskins. Uh, Kelvin Benjamin going to the Texans. Interesting pickup there. Another big threat there, or a big wide receiver, I should say. I don't know much about it being a threat, but a big guy for them to have. Um, still not seeing Gerald Hodges Jr., not seen him yet anyway. That I mean, he's probably went week one or two, honestly. And we are in week three. Kevin Minter. Yeah, no sign of Eric Berry yet, which would be shocking. Somebody had to have signed him, right? I really feel like he could help us if not. And there's a move that we can make if need be in order to um, clear up some cap space and possibly sign him. Henderson's available. Interesting. Josh Bynes was signed. He had to have been one of the first picks. Steelers signed Des Bryant. They've signed him every single time that I've noticed. Seahawks got Eric Berry. Interesting. Good pickup for them, man. Getting that Earl Thomas replacement. Okay, so that's off the table, unfortunately. Um, I will look at free agency really quick just to see if anybody stands out bringing Antonio Gates, huh? Uh, Alex Collins is actually available. Oh, he's injured. That might be part of the reason why. Um, I mean, I could go Mike Mitchell, but I don't want Mike Mitchell as much. I think I'd rather just develop a young guy at that point. He's not that big of an upgrade, whereas Eric Berry was. So my other idea, I was scrolling through the salaries on our team to kind of see how we could clear up some cap space. And the best option is really Cameron Brait. Um, you can pretty much release him right now with uh, no salary coming off the books. It'll just free up seven. No penalty taken. So my idea, even though I, I was excited to use Cameron Braid, sometimes you just have to cut a decent player for cap space. But then I was like, why should I cut Cameron Braid when maybe I could trade him away? You know, he's a 78 or 79 overall tight end. Um, so I had some options, and I honestly haven't explored it as much as I should. Maybe I should throw him on the trade block first, and we'll see if we get offers. But my, my initial idea is I was looking at our roster, and another player that I could cut and free up some cap space without taking a hit is William Goldson, who's only a 78 overall. Our backup's not that far behind. But then I was thinking, you know, the 49ers have a pretty deep defensive end group. Some of those guys are going to be on the move. I mean, they have D4. You look over here, Nick Bosa, Solomon Thomas, and Ronald Blair. And um, Julian Taylor, too, is a guy that I think might be pretty good. So they often run two tight end sets. Now, they did just draft Caden Smith. 
Only a 65 overall, though. They have Selleck, but he's up there in age a little bit more. Uh, Toy Lolo might just be a camp body. We'll see if he actually makes the roster or not. But I was looking at it, and I wonder if I could trade them for Ronald Blair. I might give this a shot. And if this doesn't work, we'll just throw them on the trade block and see what happens. Uh, they might not accept it, but it might make some sense for them. They Again, they run a lot of two tight end sets. Uh, he's only 28. He's still pretty young. They can release him at the end of the season with no salary cap penalty, uh, which would be good for them, I imagine. So, if they so choose to. But I'm looking at it, and I just don't see how they're going to be able to keep all of these guys when one of them could be used as a trade chip. So, Ronald Blair's a guy I obviously like a lot. Um, so there is a little bias, but I actually think this makes sense. It doesn't look like they have any interest in Cameron Braid, though. Let's see. It is not going to work. And I don't have interest in adding anything to it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to throw him on the trade block. And see if we get any offers for him. And if we don't, he might be a salary cap um, casually. So we'll add him to the trade block. And uh, we'll just have to wait and see if we get any offers for him. But yeah, that's one thing I really wanted to look at this week. If Eric Berry was still there, I would have just outright released him and signed Eric Berry. Um, but clearly, because Berry's gone, I don't really need to do that. We are going to wait to make any roster moves at the moment until I really see what is happening um, with all the players getting cut here. There might be some uh, really good rookies available at that point or just other players that intrigue us. So we'll keep an eye on all the people being released and stuff. Uh, one thing we're going to do for this next game is I really would like... Well, he's not even popping up here. I'd really like to get our rookie quarterback some time. Um, I, I, like I said, we've just been very disappointed with Blaine Gabbert. Don't think we need to see much else from him. Uh, so we're going to throw Nick Fitzgerald in and see what he can do. Ideally, I would like to only keep two quarterbacks on the roster. So uh, Gabbard's kind of playing himself out of a spot at the moment. Ryan Griffin has impressed me a little bit more. But we're going to give Nick Fitzgerald a chance at it and see what he can do. Uh, might be an option for us. Um, and if I have to take three quarterbacks, I will. But ideally only two. And then if Jameis Winston were to get injured, we would sign somebody else at that point. But that's the plan. Um, next up, we have the Cleveland Browns. I'm actually going to start looking at the other team's lineups in these news videos. Uh, the reason being, you know, just cut some time off the game day video for you guys. So we got Baker Mayfield at quarterback with Drew Stanton, Kareem Hunt at running back, Nick Chubb and Duke Johnson Jr. Fullback Shane Smith. Wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry. Great one-two combo, the LSU duo there. Antonio Callaway, Richard Higgins, and Jalen Strong. At tight end, David Njoku and Demetrius Harris. Left tackle, we got Greg Robinson. Left guard, Betonio. Center, Treader. As we go through the list, Austin Corbett. And then right tackle, Hubbard. Over at left end, Olivier Vernon. Great pickup for the Browns there. Pairing him with Miles Garrett at right end. Sheldon Richardson and Ogan Joby at defensive tackle. Uh, Avery left outside linebacker. Schobert and Taylor middle linebacker. Right outside linebacker going to be Kirksey. Denzel Ward going to be at corner with Terrence Mitchell. TJ Carey and the rookie Greedy Williams. Free safety Randall. And then strong safety, Burnett. So very, very good roster here. Definitely a team on the rise. Going to be interesting to see how this game plays out. Uh, they have a lot more depth than us, so I'm not sure how it's going to go. But we're going to give it our best go. That is going to do it, though, for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys in week three as we take on the Cleveland Browns. Later.